In this lecture, we're going to talk about supply. And as we talk about supply, we need to think about things from the producer's point of view rather than the consumer's point of view. Supply is the quantity of a good or service that producers are willing and able to sell at different possible prices at a particular time. Again, that ability piece is so important because some producers would love to sell their products at low prices so they can get more people to buy them. But at some very, very low prices, they're not able to keep their cost of production low enough to be able to afford to sell products at those low prices. So again, it's the ability piece that's important, not just the willingness piece, but the ability piece. Can we sell at these prices? And if so, how much are we willing and able to sell? So as prices increase, the quantity supplied in a given market will increase because even those high cost producers are going to be able to sell units of an item at higher prices. Whereas as the price drops, the quantity supplied falls because at low prices, not all producers are going to be able to afford to sell certain items. And so the higher the price, the more available in a market, the quantity supply will increase and the lower the price, the less there will be available for sale in a market. The quantity supplied will fall as the price goes down. This is an example of a supply curve, and this is an individual supply curve here, Anton's Barbershop supply curve. If this was a market supply curve, it would be the supply curve for all barbershops in an area, but this is just one specific producer. And the only way that we would get this information is by asking Anton to look at his cost of production and let us know, you know, at, at each given price per haircut, how many he would be able to do each day out of a shop. So you can see as the price of a haircut increases, the quantity supplied increases as we move up this curve here. Um, as the price fluctuates, there will just be a movement up or down the curve uh, that's, that's in existence here. Uh, the reason that he is able to produce more haircuts as the price increases is, you know, if he was doing haircuts for six bucks a piece, that's not a lot of, of money for a haircut. He's not going to be making a lot of profit per haircut that he does at his shop and he's not going to be able to afford um, a nice location or you know people to work in a shop with him it'll probably just be him doing haircuts by himself out of his garage or something like that but as the price per haircut increases the amount um, that Anton is able to offer increases because he's making more profit per haircut profit per unit and so at this high price of like 16 bucks a haircut Anton can do 70 haircuts a day here because he can hire an assistant barber to help with him. He can afford rent in a location on a busier street maybe. He can afford a receptionist to answer the phone and you know, organize the wait list and things like that. So he's not doing it all himself. He's able to produce more out of his shop per day when the price increases. The law of supply explains the shape of the supply curve. Um, supply curves always slope upwards from left to right because of the positive relationship between price and quantity and the way that we set up our um, supply curve graphs where price is always on the vertical axis and quantity is always on the horizontal axis. All right, so let's talk about some of those supply shifters. Just like there's a difference between a change in demand and a change in quantity demanded, um, we have that same thing with supply. So a change in supply is a change in the market that alters the quantity supplied at every price so the curve actually shifts um, whereas a change in price just leads to a change in quantity supplied which is a movement along that curve so if the curve shifts to the right that's an increase and if the curve shifts to the left that's a decrease try not to think up or down because as you can see that decrease in supply kind of looks like it's moving up on your sheet and that increase in supply kind of looks like it's moving down on your sheet. So don't confuse yourself. Think left and right rather than up and down. A shift to the right is an increase, a shift to the left is a decrease, or left is less. The acronym that we'll use for um, our shifters, for our reasons for changes in supply, are, um, is, or I should say is, eat it. <laughs> but there are three E's. So entry and exit, into and out of the market, expectations for future price changes, alternative products, technology, input costs, and taxes and subsidies. We'll go through these one at a time here. Entry and exit of firms or a number of sellers in the market simply means that when additional firms or businesses enter a market, the supply of the product will increase or shift to the right. 
and when firms or businesses exit a market or you know for some reason cease production then supply of the product will decrease or shift to the left an example is if the Blaine City Council passed a law banning pizza from being sold within city limits pizza producers would have to close or move decreasing the supply of pizza in Blaine so the supply curve for pizza in Blaine would shift to the left the other E so this is our 30 the first two were entry and exit and this is the 30 expectations of future price changes um, this looks familiar because this is one of our demand shifters as well but now we're thinking about how this would affect producers if producers expect the price of a good to rise in the future then immediate supply will decrease and shift to the left because producers would rather wait and sell their product later when the price goes up and they can make more money on it and vice versa producers expect the price of a good to decrease in the future, immediate supply will increase or shift to the right. For example, if Farmer Joe hears that the price of corn is going to increase next month, he's going to wait to sell his corn, therefore decreasing the immediate supply of corn. The A stands for Alternative Product Prices and Profits, and this is related to that concept of entry and exit of firms into and out of markets, so this is very closely related, related to that. As the profit-making potential in alternate markets increases, producers will cease production of the original good and begin producing the alternate good. So supply of the original good will decrease, and uh, you know, then therefore supply of the good that they're going to now be producing instead would shift to the right. For example, when the season changes from summer to winter, Billy decides to stop selling lemonade and start selling hot chocolate instead. So he exited the lemonade market, and entered the hot chocolate market, therefore decreasing the supply of lemonade and increasing the supply of hot chocolate in the winter months. T stands for technology or technological advances. As technology advances, production becomes more efficient and supply increases or shifts to the right. My example here is if a restaurant gets a new computer system so the waitresses don't have to write the orders on a sheet of paper and go hang them in the kitchen for the cooks to try to read their handwriting. Um, things will become more efficient. Things will improve. The waitresses will no longer have to calculate the total and the tax by hand. And you know, if an, if a waitress accidentally loses a slip of paper, at least the record will be in the computer, and that'll still that can still be cooked and produced and sent to the right table. Um, so things will move a lot faster with when you know when the system is computerized. So therefore, supply of meals at restaurants shifts to the right when restaurants get computer systems. The I stands for input costs. This is one of the shifters that you'll come across the most often. The input costs are the cost of production for making a good, and as we know, those costs include land, labor, and capital, all the factors of production that you need when you make something. So as these factors of production, or these input costs, go up as they become more expensive for the producer to purchase, then the producer's profit is going to decrease. So as a producer's profit per unit sold decreases, the supply curve is going to shift to the left. So for this one, if you can try to figure out what's going to happen to profits, then that's the direction the supply curve is also going to shift. On the other hand, if the factors of production become less expensive for the producer to purchase, or you know, if the, if the business can get their supplies cheaper, then their profits will increase and supply will shift to the right, because supply will, will also increase. For example, Don's landlord increases his rent, which increases Don's cost of production since rent is how he purchases his um, location or what do you, he rents out his shop. So since it's more expensive to make a donut, the profit per unit earned decreases and supply of Don's Donut falls. All right, our last category here is T, taxes and subsidies or you know other types of government intervention would also fall under this category such as regulations and uh, fees and things like that. When a tax, fee, or regulation is imposed on the production of a good or service, supply will shift to the left. It will decrease. Again, because the profits of the producer decrease. Therefore, supply decreases. When a subsidy is granted for the production of a good or a service, then supply increases or shifts to the right because that will help increase producer profits. So supply will also shift to the right or increase. And I'll give you an example of a tax and then an example of a subsidy. If the import tax on Toyota Corollas increases, the profit per unit decreases, 
and American manufacturers will not be able to afford to offer as many for sale. Toyota Corollas are not manufactured here in the United States. And here's a subsidy example. Just um, so you know, a subsidy is when the government actually gives a producer some money and helps them pay their cost of production so that they can make more profit and stay in business. So dairy farming is an example of a, an industry that's subsidized, heavily subsidized in this, in this area. We have a lot of dairy farmers living around our state and Wisconsin, Cheesehead State as well. So when the government decided to subsidize dairy farming, dairy farmers' profits increased therefore increasing the supply of dairy cattle. So again, if you can just figure out what's happening to profits, then that's the way that the supply curve will also shift. So in conclusion, remember if, if there's a change in price, there's not gonna be a shift. It's just gonna be a movement along the curve, but any of those other categories from EDA, including some that aren't listed here, will cause the curve to shift. So a shifting curve is a change in supply a movement along the curve is a change in quantity supplied, which is the result of a change in price.